Welcome to lesson 4 of CSEC Physics at Edu Solutions Institute. Now today's lesson will be focusing on scalar and vector quantities. Now we have been talking about quantities from the start. Quantities such as speed, time, temperature, current, those are what we call quantities. Those are quantities because we, those are the things that we measure and calculate to give us the size of a specific value or object. Now, what are scalar quantities? Quantities that we only represent them of their size or their magnitude. Now, the size or magnitude means the number beside the unit. So if we say the mass of an object is 25 kilograms, the 25 here represents the size, right? Now, when we're representing these quantities, we only need to represent their size, right? Now, quantities such as time, mass, temperature, current, speed, distance, and much more are quantities that are classified as scalar because when we write them or we measure them or we calculate them we only give a size for it the unit is a must because the unit differentiate if it's different from time different from mass different from temperature but when we represent them we only give it a number right so if we say time is five seconds right so the five is just the size now on the contrary our vector quantities these are quantities that has both size and direction. So size and direction means we give it a number, but we also tell us what direction is this quantity going, right? So in direction form, we will represent direction by using positive or negative numbers. We can use up or down. We can use left or right. Or we can use the cardinal points. Or more specifically, or regularly, we will use angles. So angles and positive and negative numbers are the primary ways in which we represent directions in physics. Right? Now, to know if it's a positive or a negative number based on the direction of... So let's say some object is moving. We use the T, the T graph. Anything that goes up are positive numbers. Those are the positive y-axis. Anything that goes down, negative y-axis, so they are negative directions. If you're going to the right, you have a positive direction. And if you're going to the left, you have a negative direction. So what are some quantities that we need to show the direction for? Primary force, velocity, displacement, acceleration. Momentum. Moments. These are some quantities that are strictly vector. So we have to tell what direction it is. Right? So other from the size of it, we have to give what their direction is. Now, we specify on vectors a little bit. And how do we represent vectors? So since we have to give a unique direction to these quantities we have to know how we represent them in science now we represent vectors by using arrows the importance of arrows is that the head of the arrow will point in the direction that the the vector is going and the length of the the arrow will tell us the size which is the number so if we want to represent a five newton force compared to a 10 newton force then the 10 newton has to be longer than your 5 newton force right now in representing vectors we will also understand that sometimes vectors are acting more than one on a same point or the same object now that's when we look at the term called a resultant vector and a resultant vector is just a single vector 
that gives you the action of two or more vectors acting at the same object. So example, when we look at this, let's say these two forces were pushing on a box. Now the box will move, yes, but it will move with a resultant vector. And that resultant vector is sometimes called a net force if you're using force as the vector. And that would be because they're going in the same direction, the resultant is the sum of the two vectors that you're acting. So we get that this box will be moving with a 15 Newton force and we know the direction it's going to the right. All right? So the arrow shows the direction and then we have the size of that resultant. But what if it was the same box and these two forces now go opposite to each other. So we have the 10 going this way and the 5 going this way. Then we know that the resultant in this case would be 10 minus 5, which gives us 5 newtons. And the direction would be it's going in the larger one, which would mean that the box would be going to your left. So this 5 newton to the left is a resultant vector because it's the action of two vectors acting on an object. All right? Now, in reality, forces or vectors will not always act parallel to each other, meaning going in the same direction or going opposite direction. Sometimes vectors will act at different angles. Now, the angles that we will focus on at the CSEC level would be at 90 degrees to each other. All right? So let's say we take these two same vectors, the 10 and the 5, and we want to know what's the direction that they're acting, their final acting will go if they're going in 90 degrees to each other. So we take the same box and we take that the 10 is pushing it this way, but the 5 is trying to pull it down. All right? So notice if we extend these here, it creates a 90 degree to each other. Now, where would be your resultant? But just by looking at it, we know that your resultant should be somewhere here. That's the direction. We don't know the size because it's not the sum of them because they're not going the same direction. And we can't subtract because that will not be the answer because they're not going opposite direction. How do we know what direction and the size? We're going to do two steps or three. So step one is we're going to remove the box and we're going to align the arrows to head and tail. And what that means is if we take the 10 to go this way, all right, then the 5 has to go down. To go down, head and tail, that means we can put the 5 here to go down. So this connection is a head and tail connection. And hence, what this tells us is that if we connect this free end, it gives us the direction of your resultant vector, which would be somewhere in that direction. So notice the arrow is somewhere here, right? So this is a 90 degree connection here. So that means to find this, which is your hypotenuse through the right angle, it is using Pythagoras theorem. It is the square root of 10 squared plus 5 squared, so that which is the square root of 100 plus 25 is the square root of 125. And if we put that in your calculator, square root of 125 would be 11.18. So now we notice that your resultant force acting on this object here is 11.18, right? Now we need the direction. The direction is, what is this angle right here that is at the tail of your resultant? So to find that angle, we can use tan. We can use any one, tan sine, because we have all three sides. So tan theta is the opposite side over the, high, the adjacent side. 
right? So tan theta is equal to the opposite side, which is 5, over the adjacent side, which is 10, which is 5 over 10 is 0 0.5, and that's tan theta. So therefore, theta is equal to the tan inverse of 0 0.5, and that will give us shift tan 0 0.5 is 26.57 degrees. And what this means is that because this angle is to the horizontal, that your resultant vector is 26.57 acting, your resultant, sorry, is 11.18 newtons acting 26.57 degrees away from the 10 newton force. So we can write that as a summary in our final answer that it is 11.18 newtons acting at 26.57 degrees away from the 10 newton force. And we know it's away from the 10 newtons because this is your R and it's the angle is between R and 10. So therefore, your angle is away from the 10 newton force. Now, in any situation, once it's at 90 degrees, this is the same step to follow, right? Once you follow these steps, you never get an incorrect answer. Now, the first thing is you need your resultant and you need your angle, right? Some questions will, will say, find your resultant, which means find your resultant and your angle. So it doesn't have to always say find the angle because remember, vectors have to have a direction and your angle will be your direction of your vector right so that's it for this week so i hope you have enjoyed and you have learned something about scalar and vector quantities so see you next week where we continue with our c syllabus bye bye